Hi Sam, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be having a look at the new Tamiya LP lacquer paints. Now, I've been waiting for these to arrive on UK shores for quite some time now. They arrived with us last week and I thought what better way of demoing and showing them uh, since we stock them at Ultimate Modern Products than to uh, spray the newest car build I'm doing in them. So as you can see, there's a red GT40 behind me. I've got a selection of LP paints to... Um, to use on it and I've picked a few to show in a video. Now these have been out for quite some time but not able to land on our shores yet and I know they're not in the states yet either and that's more than likely going to be down to um, the labelling issues that Tamiya sometimes has. All labelled fine for the UK now so we've got them, maybe the states will get them at some point, I don't know. But I've been using LP5, the semi-gloss black, for months. I've gone through about, I'm on my fourth bottle now. I had to order one from the Far East and absolutely love the stuff. It's by far the best semi-gloss black I've seen so far. It was Carlos starting to put me onto it um, and it's beautiful. I've been using it thin with Miss Hobby Leveling Thinner, but after using all these paints uh, with the Tamiya uh, Lacquer Thinner with Retarda, I'll be using that for future reference. I think it gives a nicer finish. It's my personal preference, but thinning with either will work just fine. I've been using them both, um, no problem at all. So, we've got them at UMP Retail. Um, most of the paints retail about £1.85. Um, a few of them, so they'd be the more highly pigmented or coloured ones, around the £265 mark. We do have the full range in stock. Due to demand, they've been going in and out of stock as we go. Uh, we're about to put our third order in for them. So, they are proving very, very popular. And I think we're very competitively priced on UMP as well. So the paints are about 185 and 265, depending on the colours. And the lacquer paint, uh, thinner with retarders, 2 699 it is. Uh, now we do the non-retarder one for 599. My preference would be use the retarder with lacquers. That slightly slower drying time just seems to make them a little bit smoother. That's my personal preference, and uh, that's where I'll go on from now on. So like I said, I've got a small selection of behind me. Um, we're going to test today LP21 Italian Red, LP5 Semi Gloss Black. Uh, we're going to use LP11 Silver and LP62 Gold. So we're going to use the red on the body, we're going to use the gold on the wheels, we're going to use the black on the chassis and the silver on the engine. And I'll show them all being sprayed. As you can see, this is the result we've got with the... Um, GT40. Uh, I also use the LP9 clear as well as a barrier between the red paint and the decals to stop any blue through. That worked fantastic and absolutely over the moon how this looks. It's been 2k cleared, that's the gloss coat off the 2k clear, but you can see how beautiful that red is. It's absolutely stunning, and I've got all this on film showing it. So, best thing to do is we head over to the spray booth, we get started. Have a little look, and uh, then we'll come back and have a chat. Okay, so we're over in the spray booth. I've got my Fujimi GT40 body shell and wheels. We're going to use the LP21 Italian Red on the body, and LP62 Titanium Gold on the wheels. I've also got the lacquer paint with Retarda, thinner. Uh, we've got some medicine cups, some pipettes, and safety gloves as well. Now the body shell has been primed in Tamiya TS um, Pink Primer, decanted, thin 10% with lacquer paint, uh, with retarder thinner, and that was just dry a couple of days, and the wheels have been primed in UMP Black Primer. The idea of the pink primer is it makes the red paint pop. Yellow works just as well, but sadly we no longer sell the yellow primer at Ultimate Modeling Products. So I've got a badger paint mixer. We're going to give the LP21 a good mix up inside. Uh, the paint mix is ideal for this. As always, any products I use in my videos are linked in the description. Um, the, click the link, that'll take you to the forum. There's a huge list of every product I use with a link to it as well. So we give this a good stir up, not knowing how much paint I'm going to need, because I've never painted as large a surface as I am today with these LPs. I said to make life easier, I thought I'll tip the entire lot into the medicine cup, 10 mil. And we'll just thin it about 60% with the um, lacquer thinner with retarder. That way I've got a full um, supply of paint thinned. I'm not going to run out halfway through and have to remix. 
and um, this will just be used for airbrushing anyway so I'll just mark the lid of the paint part as thinned and I know for future reference so there's about 10 mil of paint in there I'm gonna add about 13 milliliters of the thinner with retarder as you can see we're using a pipette to decant it so we've got the right amount in there let me give it a good mix up it's important to make sure all these paints are fully mixed if you leave them standing for some time they're going to need mixing again and just pay attention to what you're doing there we go put the lid on your thinners put them safely out of the way now we're going to give this a quick mix up again like i say the badger paint mixer absolutely superb if you have a full pot like this put the mixer down the bottom stop it sloshing up and roll around the sides And give it a good whiz round till it's all fully mixed. So there we go. Way too much paint than I'll actually need. But doing it this way, I know I've got perfectly thinned and enough to do the model. As you can see, it's a very highly pigmented red. Nice, vibrant colour. And hopefully this is going to look absolutely superb. We've got our Ultimate Apex, the 035 millilitre needle. Just put some thinner through it and blown it through to make sure we're clean. And we're going to load up the colour cup, put the paint pot to one side, and get our first layer of paint down. We're at about 18 psi. And what we're going to do is just get a light coat all around. So what I'll do is get a light mist on one side, go around all over the body. And by the time I've gone round, I can come back and lay down a second coat. Because these very fine mist coats at the beginning dry ultra fast. So I can get almost two coats down in the time we should take one, really. As you can see, it covers well. We're not hosing the paint on. We're not trying to get full coverage in the first go. We're just getting nice, even, thin coats all around. Aiming at the different angles, getting all nooks, crannies, the intakes, underneath the sills, over the tops. And just get a nice, even coat all the way around. And like I say, by the time we come back around to the side we started with, That'll be dry and we can put a second coat on. Once the paint's gone down a little bit thicker, we'll put it to one side for five, ten minutes to dry and off gas. But as you can see, it builds up well. Over the pink primer, it really does build up quickly. And you can start to see that red really starting to show through already. Lots of awkward angles to get on this car. We've got lots of intakes and vents and what have you. Just pay attention when you're going around to make sure you get the full coverage where you need. Nothing worse than fully painting the car and realising you've not quite got in all the areas. Pay particular attention to all the vents, uh, light uh, clusters, wheel arches around the windows. And make sure you get all those angles covered. Some of it may, may be repainted at a later date. But I'd rather get the coverage now. Then happen to repaint red later on. As you can see, we're getting a nice layer of paint down. No problem at all. It's covering really well. And starting to layer up on the second coat now. It's really starting to layer up. Get a little bit inside as well, not forgetting to our door pillars. Um, around the windows inside as well is fine handy. Although some of these may be masked off and painted black at a later date, I still think it's worth paying attention to them. Um, I'd rather overpaint than underpaint. At least that way. If I'm painting a different colour, it's already got a base colour down. Uh, if it's not, I know I've got full coverage and there's no bits showing through that haven't been fully painted. So, we're just coming to the end of our second coat. And as you can see, the coverage is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's covered really well. Again, just getting inside all those little areas, the front of the vent, at the back. Making sure we get all the angles required. But the coverage on this stuff is phenomenal. It lays down beautiful. Uh, with that retarder thinner, it levels nicely. And it still dries really quick. Even with the retarder in, it's still drying nice and fast. As you can see, we're getting a good shine to it already. Not too bad at all. I'm just having a quick look around to make sure we got everywhere. We'll leave that five minutes and come back for our third coat. Okay, the third coat going down. We've gone left to right. Now we're going to go up and down. Again, this ensures even coverage all round. And uh, 
starting to get that color down it's just looking absolutely amazing i'm so impressed by this red uh, and i'm very happy i picked this color i did originally pick um i think it was lp7 the normal red and i switched out the last minute and went for this italian one and i'm really happy i did i think it suits the body shape and the color it just looks amazing it really does so there's a third coat going down it's going down really nicely again getting all the angles We've been all around it now for our third coat, and as you can see, getting some nice shine to that body. It really is, and the coverage is just, it's just top notch, it really is. Uh, it's covered really well, using very little paint as well. Okay, our last coat, our fourth and final coat. So, we can put this on a little bit heavier now, not too much, we're never trying to flood it. it it'll look awful if we put too much paint down, but we can put on a little bit heavier, and now this will be our final coat we really need to make sure you've got all your angles covered there's no pink primer still showing through or areas where you've not got quite the paint down enough really take your time now to inspect it all and as you can see you're getting a slightly wetter coat on now it's still thin the same percent uh, exactly the same paint we put through the airbrush in the beginning but we're just putting a slightly wetter coat down we're getting a nice gloss finish now as well as you can see so beautiful vibrant color and a really nice easy paint to spray so there we go coming to the end of our fourth and final coat of paint absolutely lovely color we've got a nice gloss finish to that as well now uh, very vibrant everything is covered well with no issues at all this will now be left for 24 hours and we'll come back and hit it with a barrier coat of lp9 clear uh, in preparation for our decals now of course side by side with this i've been painting um, the rear, um, I think it's an intake um, separately. So each coat the body shell's got, this side of coat as well. And as always with the smaller parts, take your time and make sure you don't overspray them. Any excess paint's been tipped away, and as you can see, I've used about, I would say, about 8 mil of paint. Um, so not too bad at all. Um, the paint now will be put back into the pot. I'll mark this as thinned for future reference, spill a little bit while I'm at it. Um, and we can make sure um, we know that it's thinned for future use. Now cleaning, as you can see the paint colour cup is absolutely full of lacquer paint. It's been sat in there now for about half an hour. I've been doing all these coats. So we're giving her some lacquer thinner. These are lacquer paints that require a lacquer thinner. Again, there's a list of products I use in the description down below. Give it a backflow clean like I showed in my airbrush cleaning video last time. Uh, backflow clean, wipe out and get all the lacquer out. Now, we've got our LP62 titanium gold. We've got our Apex with a 02 mil needle conversion in that I spray my metallics through. Just for reference as well, I thought you might like to see how I clean my Badger paint stirrer. I've got a glass pot full of lacquer paint with an old brush for rule bent over and hot glue gunned on. And I literally dip the uh, Badger paint mixer in, spin it around on the brush, and the most part cleans it all. Okay, so the LP62 has been thinned approximately 50% with the Tamiya Thinner with Retarder. We're through the apex of the 0.2mm needle and we're at 18 psi again. And we're just getting some light coats down on these wheels to begin with. So we're probably getting about three coats down these on total. And as you see, I've sprayed the front of the wheels from directly on and then the back. And then we're going to spray each angle side by side at about 45 degrees. And as you see, I'll turn it as I go. And what this does is ensures they get full coverage in all the spokes and recesses and spraying in a circular pattern as I am. As you can see, we're not pulling all our paint down at all. We're getting nice even coverage all the way around. This can be put down between coats for five minutes to dry. Second coat now, and as you can see, starting on the front again. Give it a good go over. And then flip it over on the back and do exactly the same as we did first time round. And like I say, this just ensures nice, even coverage, and there's no horrible spots of primer showing through, or areas where the metal hasn't quite taken. Just finishing off our third and final coat, and as you can see, the wheels are looking great. Very nicely pigmented paint, a really nice colour as well. Like I said, it's really going to look good against the red. Now, we've got the Tamiya LP9 clear. So what we're going to do, we're going to apply a couple of gloss coats to the body. Um, not to get a real glossy finish as such, but to give it a barrier coat for decals. So say you were decaling an aircraft, 
or a piece of armor and you want to protect the paint or the decals this is a good way of doing it uh, we're not trying to get a massively high gloss finish we're just adding enough of a gloss coat so it protects the decals from either the paint underneath or any subsequent weathering we're going to add over the top so we're going to thin this um, we're going 60 40 again so using the pipette we're getting a lacquer paint uh, thinner with retarder from tamia and we're just going to give this a few probably three coats again and give it a nice gloss finish to protect our decals when they go on top so as you can see again just going over it with that light mist coat to begin with if you've got decals on you need to be especially careful with any clear coats that are thinned more than you know that are thinned quite heavily because if you're not careful the, the uh, thinner will eat the decals i.e will melt them crinkle them or just destroy them full stop so if you've got decals down you need to put very nice mist coats over them let those fully dry and come in and build up the clear coat as you go so all we're doing here is lightly going all over the body from all the different angles ensuring that we get even coverage all the way around just paying attention with the clear you can't see it clearly pardon the uh, the saying um, so you just need to use the light to your advantage I use the body and angle it towards my work light above and you can see where the clear coat's gone just to ensure you've got full coverage now like I'll say in a bit what this is for because using such a strong color red and we've got white decals there's a chance that the red paint um, can leach through the white of the decal and turn them pink so what this should do because we're putting a barrier coat between the paint and the decal it should stop that happening we will see at the end once we've got all 2k clear coated um, but this is the plan now first time using the lp9 clear and it's spraying really nice we're starting to build up a nice gloss coat just off our, i think this is our second coat now and it's building up really well and just ensuring to get all the angles get the bottom of the sills wheel arches in all those lights all the intakes around the windows and as you can see that's a pretty decent clear um, for decals or weathering after just a couple of light coats i think with a bit of work and some heavier coats building up slowly you could get a nice clear coat out of this with some polish and a bit of elbow grease. But for us, this is just a barrier coat. So there we go. This is us putting our third coat on now. As you can see, just taking our time again, building up slowly. As you can see, it's getting glossier and glossier with each pass. And as we finish off our third coat, we've got a nice gloss finish there. That's going to be absolutely perfect for decaling over. And should give us that nice barrier coat I'm looking for for the decals. Very happy with that. That's a beautiful clear to use. Okay, Tamiya LP5 semi gloss black. We've got the chassis to the GT40 now. We're primed in ultimate black primer. And now we're going to give it a semi gloss black finish. And like I said before, I've been using this paint for months. Uh, we've got the apex with the 0.35 needle we're at 18 psi again it's thin 50 percent with the tamiya paint uh, thinner with retarder and we're going to put a fairly light coat down to begin with and then come back and apply uh, a slightly heavier coat at the end because we've already got a black primer and we're putting a black paint over it it doesn't need as much coverage as some other colors a couple of coats should do this just fine so we're going to get a nice even coat all on the front and then get the sides, ensure we get all those recesses and angles again to ensure even coverage. Uh, this is by far the best semi gloss black I've used. I've been using it for ages. Um, highly recommend this color, it is beautiful. Like I said, I've gone through it's about my fourth pot of this I've gone through now. And uh, just with that light coat to begin with, we get a nice semi gloss sheen already. We'll come back a little bit heavier now with a second coat. As you can see, just finishing off the sides and over the tops. Once this dries, it'll have a very nice semi-gloss sheen. LP11 Silver now. Again, first time using this colour. So, Badger Paint Mixer again. We're going to get a good stir up. We've got the uh, Apex with the 0.2mm needle conversion set again. Uh, it's my preferred needle size for the metallics. I just like the control I get off it. 
uh, for putting down the nice thin coats. So again, give it a whiz up with the Badger paint mixer. Um, it's a very important step often missed by people to ensure all your pigments are evenly dispersed through the paint. Give it a wipe off. Whatever you do, don't, don't hit the paint mixer button now or you'll get covered in paint. How do I know? Yes, I just know, trust me. Um, so we're going to put about two millimeter liters of paint in the cup. We're not going to need a lot for this engine. And we're going to stick two milliliters of um, the lacquer paint with Retarder and Tamiya in there too. Give it a quick whiz up. And let's he see how this looks. I use all sorts of clear um, metallics in my day-to-day -day modeling. Like I said, it's the first time using this. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it looks. Not a fan of the Tamiya X and XF range of metallics. Often find the metallic flakes in them way too big and they look just totally wrong. So very interested to see how this one's going to perform. The titanium gold we used on the wheels was very good to use. Um, very nice color. Pigmented very finely as well and gave a nice finish. So it's going to be interesting to see how this sprays up on the engine. So 50-50 mix, two millimeter needle nozzle set in the apex 18 psi again and we're going to spray up the engine to the gt40 this time so we're going to pop a bit in as you can see by looking at the color in the medicine cup it's beautiful um it's a very nice silver color find a up black primer again give it a dust off and we're going to put down a light coat to begin with I'm going to paint the entire part and not all of it is going to be silver but number one it shows better for the video and number two I often paint the entire part in one color anyway to ensure nothing is missed um, and it's no real hardship to paint the entire thing even if it's going to get painted in different colors later on anyway to get all different angles and corners we're just making sure we get even coverage where we need it and after the first coat it's only a very very light coat that's gone down really well. Have a little zoom in and a look. As you can see, no issue with the pigments there at all. They are very, very fine. Second coat now. We're coming in, just finishing off. I'm just having a quick inspect around to make sure I've got everywhere I want. And again, very, very nice coverage. After just two light coats, we've got very even coverage all around. And that looks great. Third and final coat now. Very happy with how that looks. It's probably dried in, I'd say, a matte aluminium color, which is very, very useful. One of my favorite colors, maybe AK Extreme, is their matte aluminium. So this will do me in this. Very nice engine color. And yes, very happy with that. If we zoom in and have a little look, the coverage is really even all over. Pigments aren't too big at all. You cannot see the pigments, not like in the other normal acrylic range of Tamiya's and I'm very happy with that colour. Spray beautiful and dried absolutely amazing. Excellent stuff. So this is a few days later the car has been decaled and we've got our Pro Range 2K clear coat down uh, and as you can see no bleed through on those decals whatsoever so the Barrier LP9 clear worked very well. The Italian red is stunning it's very vibrant uh, it's an absolutely beautiful color and the 2k has gone down over it flawlessly as well This is completely out of the gun. This hasn't been touched at all Once we flat it and give it a good polish We'll lose that thick look of the 2k and we'll be left with a very very nice clear coat Very happy with that and glad I chose that color Okay, there we go. So that footage was filmed over a week um, obviously after things dry to progress I wanted to get the body all decaled and 2K so we could show it in its final result. And I'm so happy with that G4, GT40 looks. It's amazing. That red LP21 is an absolutely beautiful color. And I've been using the TS sprays decanted, spray through the airbrush for ages now, well over a year. I've got loads of them. I love them. They are beautiful paints. These lacquer paints, they're, uh, I, I would think, I'd say they're better. They spray nicer. Um, obviously they're designed to be airbrushed. They spray beautiful thin with the, uh, thinner with retarder from Tamiya. And that Italian red, I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. I've got some pictures as well. I'll pop those up so you can have a look. 
But with that combined with the 2K clear coat, uh, the 2K is not Tamiya obviously, it's my automated clear coat using all my cars, it's beautiful. Um, the LP5, which I've been using anyway, turned out great, it's beautiful semi-gloss black. The silver, first time ever using that, absolutely fantastic colour. Probably, I'd say it was on part of like a matte aluminium colour. Lovely colour, looks amazing, and they dry so quick. Really fast drying paints. Um, amazing. Uh, the LP62 gold on the wheels looks great. I've got a wash in those now as well, and they look absolutely amazing. And that LP9 clear coat, that went down over the LP21. No issues at all. Um, sprayed really nice. And I think with a bit of work, you can get a good clear coat off that as well. The only downside is because it's thinned 50 60%, it, it's got a lot of thinner in there. You need to watch your decals because you stand a chance of melting them if you're not careful. Using clear coats with thinner in. Um, but as a barrier coat over the red, it went down no problem at all. Decals went on top, no issues, no issues with our decal solutions on there at all. Everything laid down great. Once it was hit with the 2K, I had no bleed through whatsoever. So I think that may be a step I use on all my builds. It only took half an hour extra to do. It dried super fast, and I mean super fast. These lacquer paints are unbeatable for drying fast, and the result speaks for itself. I've got no bleed through on the red at all. What happens with any paint? Uh, red's highly pigmented, it's a strong colour. If you put your yeah, white decals down and then hit it with any solvent based um, clear coat or whatever, quite often the red can leach through the white decal and it becomes pink. I've got a couple in there that have done it um, and it does look awful. If you can bear with me a sec, I'll even show you one. I have one at hand. So this is Tamiya's um, NSX Castrol. If you look at the decal on the spoiler, see how the decal has gone pink? That's because the red, and that was a TS spray, has um, leached through the decal and made it pink. Now, if I had to spray that in a clear coat first, um, we'd have decals as white as that. So that LP9 may become a full-on step in my build process now because it worked absolutely amazing so very happy with these paints can't wait to add the full range to them um to my collection i've only got a sample so far um and i would be using these as much as i possibly can now highly recommended like i say we've got the full range at umpretail.com so go and have a look they're going in and out of stock as we get them and they go out they're proven very very popular but go on over and have a look we've got an offer on the full range as well so you can save things about 10 percent over the full range um, and obviously we've got all of the kinds of modeling goodies on there as well. So go on over to UMP Retail and have a look. There we go. As always, check out International Scale Model Facebook page and forum. My Paul ISM Facebook page for all my personal modeling work. Check out the Live of the Bench uh, group on Facebook for the live show info. Check out the Off-Air Hangout group for the Off-Air Hangouts. And as I said already, check out UMPRetail.com as well. Hope you like that look at those new Tamiya LP paints. Highly recommended by me. Go and have a look and I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.